Thanks to the supporters of channel member Colin Archer. Folks, I just want to take a second to thank today's episode sponsor, Super Club Soccer. Super Club Soccer is a football game that's free to play on Steam featuring turn-based gameplay. Every player in a team is individually controlled and can be controlled by a different human player. You create your own character, you can play in any position, you can train your player, or you can fiddle with your attributes, tailor them to play the way you want to play, in your style. Customizable stuff aplenty. You can also team up with your friends to play against people from all over the world. You can create your own team, create leagues, play in cups. There's a lot to do in this game. And what's more, as I mentioned, it's free to play, so there's no reason not to go and check it out. The link to download on Steam is at the top of the description below. Click on the link, download for free, try it out, have some fun playing some football with your mates. Or if you've not got any mates, play on your own. Either way, I'm comfortable with either way. And at the end of the day, boys and girls, this is a fantastic way for you to not only try out something cool that you really might enjoy, but also to support the channel without it costing you anything. Having sponsors on the channel allows me to stress a little bit less about paying those bills. And uh, hopefully that lowered stress levels comes through in the videos with a happier, smileier, more positive Kev. You, you, can, you can make that happen by clicking the link at the top of the description. And let me know down in the comments what you think of the game. Go try it out. It's fun. Hello and welcome to part 156 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the first knockout round in the Champions League. We're away against Paris Saint-Germain. I envisage that being quite tricky. And um, we're also facing Wolves in the Premier League as well. Since you were last with me, we've played quite a lot of games. We won most of them, but then we've we've lost some that we really shouldn't have lost. These back-to-back -back defeats against Leicester and Norwich, genuinely a little bit worried the whole season was going to go down the drain at that point. But luckily, we I, I, I ended up kind of making the decision for the FA Cup to play the first team just to give them a confidence-boosting run out, even though I'd normally rotate them for that. And we battered Chelsea and then managed to spin that of in the play, beating Liverpool and West Brom, but then played the reserves against Bournemouth in the next round of the FA Cup and got a battering. So hopefully that isn't going to set us up for defeat against Paris Saint-Germain. The Premier League table is still looking very good. 26 games played. We are still top of the league, although Manchester United are only two points behind us with a game in hand, so we definitely need to keep an eye on them. We've also had the January transfer window happen. Um, we haven't done a huge amount in January. Um, we were able to register Sir Harrison Davies back in both squads, so he is now available to play if needs be. He's also away on his coaching course as well, or he was on a coaching course. Has he now done his coaching? We had him on a coaching course. We're going to try and send him again. I'm sure I sent him on a coaching course. Maybe because he hasn't got staff attributes yet, we can't actually see what coaching qualifications he's got. But I am like 90% sure we sent him on a coaching course when he first came back. I think the first one is a relatively short course, so there's every chance he's actually completed that now. And we can send him away on another one, hopefully. Um, the other thing that we did um, was bring in Mads Ness, who, I mean... I've not done this yet because I wanted you to know who he was before I did it. But with a name like that, I am reliably informed that is pronounced Ness. So obviously, this guy, forevermore, if I can spell, is going to be known as Madness. So we've brought Madness in, given him the number seven shirt. He is another wonder kid, of course. We've played him a couple of times so far, uh, but he's uh, he's not yet established himself in the team. When he came in, we actually got a £66 million offer for Yordi from a Chinese club. If you remember, um, that's how much we paid for Yordi. And I thought all my Christmases had come at once when we got a £66 million offer for him. He refused to go to China and has actually ended up going to join Paris Saint-Germain, the team we're playing now, as has Sydney. Both of them have gone on loan to Paris Saint-Germain for the rest of the season, with PSG agreeing to play them both regularly. Now, theoretically, they should be able to play in the Champions League. Whether or not they will, I don't know, but they're both out there to get some game time. We might be playing against Jordi and Sydney today, which on the one hand, I think we can beat a team that puts Jordi and Sydney in their first team. On the other hand, they'll probably knock us out, won't they? And then I'm going to look like a right Wally. Um, but 
We'll see. There you go. Oh, yeah. So Davies had already done his... I'm talking about formal Davies. Uh, Sir Harrison had already done his C license, and now he's doing his B license. Sooner or later, this guy's going to get manager uh, coaching attributes. And at that point, we can actually offer him a coaching job and get him off the playing staff. Although he has played since returning. We've played him in uh, a few cup games, two starts and a substitute appearance in the cup. So Harrison Davies still adding to his to his haul of appearances for us. But let's head over to Paris for the game against PSG, the first leg. Um, we know how dangerous away legs can be in the Champions League knockouts from last year, but we've learned nothing and we're still going to go there and do the 4-2-4. Uh, but what we are going to do is play our, our two Scottish midfielders and actually have Kleber out on the left wing, uh, mainly because Park has picked up an injury. Of course, as soon as we loaned Sydney out, Park was going to pick up an injury and he has... Um, he's going to be out for three weeks with a calf strain, so Ian's got to move over to the right-hand side. Kleber can move back up front, and we've re recalled Jamie Much from his loan at West Brom um, so that he can continue to add muscle in the midfield alongside McKinna. I think my Champions League midfield was going to be McKinna and Kleber. We now can't do it unless we play Madness, but I think Much is probably closer to the first team than Madness is. So... This is what we're doing. Perez in goal, a bat for of Kovalik, Elias Erkan and Vinicius Antonio. McKenna and Much in midfield, Kleber and Ian out wide, and then Juan Jose and Veloso up front. The other thing that was going on throughout the January transfer window, um, we were constantly getting an offer of £102 million from Real Madrid for Park. No one else came in for Park all January, and Real Madrid, despite us declining it over and over and over again, they never went up from £102 million. We put a £300 million asking price on him. He's not going for a penny under £300 million. Um, equally, with Kovalik, every club in Europe was making offers for Kovalik, but for some reason, the offers are now like £20, £25 million, And we turned down 180 or something, I think, at one point for him. So, obviously, he's not going for that kind of money. He's got a £200 million asking price. Similar to Park, he will not be going a penny under £200 million. For those two boys to leave the club, it's half a billion pounds coming in in transfer money. So I don't expect it to happen. They are both still on the transfer list at their own request. I just have no plans to sell them. And I've told them that as well. And they're grumpy about it, but still luckily not leading the rest of the team astray. So I guess that's a positive. McKinna with that crunching tackle that we're getting so used to seeing in midfield for him. Such an important player for us in central midfield and there's your ball over the top looking for Veloso who couldn't quite get goal side of his man but played it back nicely to Juan Jose much feeds it into Ian and now Ian is in but his shot is straight at the goalkeeper I don't remember the last time we played Ian on the right hand side for more than a few minutes at the end of a game so it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on um, I think when I did quick pick before the match to have a look to see what that recommended once again quick pick was trying to put Veloso out onto the right wing um, which obviously, once again, I've ignored because the idea of playing Veloso on the right wing is insane. Don't always trust quick pick boys and goes, Veloso is just hoping the scoring. On the topic of how insane it would be for him to play on the right wing, 10 minutes in, we've grabbed an away goal. We've grabbed our first goal of the match. I think that's number 33 for the season for Veloso. It's February. The man is a goal scoring machine. He's our all time record goal scorer. He's just going to keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. No one's ever going to get near him for goals for home FC because he is just insane. Right, a free kick on the edge of the area for PSG, and that is a beautiful goal. You can't begrudge him scoring that. It's just a stunning free kick. Perez doesn't even move. And, I mean, what do you expect? How is he supposed to get to that? The wall is positioned, and somehow they've managed to bend it around the wall because the wall was fine. The wall is not poorly positioned there, but it's managed to go up and around the wall and bend back in time to comfortably end up in that top corner on the opposite side of the goal to what Perez is defending. No wonder he didn't move because there's no point. He could have, he could have done a dive for the cameras, but he, it, all that would do is demonstrate just how far away from it he was going to be. That was The wall was supposed to be there, and you put the wall there to challenge the attacker. If you're going to score on this side, you've got to beat this wall. And he did. So fair enough. Uh, Veloso's in again, forcing the save out of the PSG goalkeeper. And now we've got a corner. And this is an opportunity for us to go back ahead in the game just before half time. Juan Jose to take the corner. It's an in swinger. It's a good one as well. 
uh, but unfortunately can't find a home player. It's headed clear, and Juan Jose plays it back to Erkan and now Elias, and they're probably not the two players we wanted to have combining in that area of the pitch to try and keep the attack moving. Veloso now playing it back to Erkan. Now McKenna and Much. This is good football from us. Antonio on the right hand side. Ian back to Antonio again. Cross looking for Kleber and he's headed it over. We're having chances. We have been the better team in this first half. I um I haven't really been paying attention to how good PSG are. Oh, that's a sensational goal again. We've been the better team in this first half, but we are behind thanks to two moments of sheer brilliance. In Paris Saint-Germain, I think that answers my question about how good they are. They're clearly very, very good. They've got some incredible talent in their team. We just happen to have outplayed them in that first half, but don't have the the lead to show for it. The match stats confirm that we have been the better side. And to be honest, it's the away leg. 2-1 defeat in the away leg. We've picked up the away goal. We're, we're certainly not out of the tie by any stretch. We'll take this. We'll take this back to our place and be relatively confident that we can beat them at home. Um, if they score again, it starts to be a bit of a problem and a disappointment as well when we've played as well as we have because you know how morale works in football manager. We've just lost in the FA Cup. If we're now losing the Champions League as well, that's just two defeats on the bounce. It's quite hard to come back from. And this one, we've played very, very well. We just could do with that little bit of extra finishing I mean, it, it's the difference between having Park in the side or not, because Park's always good for a goal. He's in double figures for the season. Ian, not quite so prolific a scorer, especially from this right-hand side. Please go and score now to prove me wrong, Ian. But also now, he is drifting out wide, and he finds Kleber, and Kleber's there with the header for the equaliser, and that's always going to be the threat with Kleber playing that little bit further forward. His aerial threat is going to be huge. He's actually spent... Most of January away playing for Brazil under 23s. And I checked on him and they've been playing him as a wide target man on the left all the way through. It's not something we've done yet, but it is supposedly his best position. It's just, I'm going to take some convincing to believe that a wide target man is a position I want to use. But he's six foot four and he had a very good tournament for Brazil. If we have a look at Brazil under 23s, four matches played. As a wide target man, he scored in three of them. He's averaged, what, a 7.6-ish? Um, decent XG throughout. He's been, a, he's been a total threat, a constant threat. And that left-hand side is a wide target man. But I just don't want to use it. I don't want to use a wide target man. Thanks. Although, I guess if Brazil are willing to do it, maybe I need to get off my high horse. And accept that if it's good enough for Brazil, it's probably good enough for home. Right, we are going to take off Kleber now because he is tired-ish. And we're going to bring on Marcelo, who very nearly went to Chelsea on loan for the rest of the season. They were interested. They just wouldn't commit to playing him regularly. They wanted him in as a fringe player. And they were willing to pay his full £92,000 a week salary, though. But... I wasn't really that interested. There's no point in going and sitting on their bench. He can sit on our bench. And as you can see, he's come on. Right, we're going to bring Diaz on, move McKenna over to box-to-box -box midfield, and much has done really well. Considering this is his first start since playing the first half of the season away at West Brom, to go from playing for West Brom to playing away from home against Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League, Jamie Much did not look out of place. Scotland's midfield is going to be very solid for the next 10 years with those two boys in there. Um, but 2-2, two, two, we are definitely happy with that. Now, hopefully, we can go and beat Wolves in the league and not have that Premier League hangover, the Champions League hangover even. Wolves are in 14th place. We need a result because tomorrow we're going to have Manchester United, who are the team who are behind us with a game in hand, in the second leg of this PSG game. In fact, I might show you Manchester City. I'm going to play Wolves offline. I'll show you Man City now, and then tomorrow we'll do Man United and PSG again. I think that's probably better. Well, we have some good news, bad news off the back of the Wolves game. We beat them 2-0. Lovely, 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 especially because Manchester United lost against West Brom. Um, so they're now level on points, level on games played with us. 
and we're four points clear of them, which is very handy. If we win our next two Premier League games against Manchester City and Manchester United. I don't want to say that will win us the league, but it will get us very, very close. That's for sure. Um, but the bad news is Kleber has now joined the walking wounded, um, as has Diego Perez. We are running out of wide options. Uh, Madness is going to have to start here, and it's much earlier than I would have wanted him to start. And also, it's my 1,000th game in the save, apparently. There you go. Chapman reaches 1,000 games in management. And as, I mean, it's a one-club save. It's 1,000 games managing home. And there's a little summary of all the lovely old stuff that we've achieved over the course of this career. Um, but this is the team that we're putting out there for the Manchester City game. And um, we've got Perez in goal, a back four of Kovalik, Elias Erkan and Antonio. Much and McKenna together again in midfield. Madness out on the left, Ian on the right. Juan Jose and Veloso up front. You want to see how mad the uh, selection vice is again? It still thinks Veloso on the wing, Ian up front is the answer for this game. It's like it, I mean, SI, this must be, this is, a, this is a glitch, this is a bug, right? How can you be telling me to play this man on the wing rather than up front? I don't understand. Should we go and take on Manchester City? Remember, wins in these next two games, absolutely huge when it comes to title aspirations for us. So a win here is, I, I won't say it's vital, there's still plenty of football to play. Manchester City are eight points behind us. It's not completely essential that we win. However, if we do win, and if we then go on and beat Manchester United in the first half of Sunday's episode, then we're a long way clear with not much left to not much left to go in terms of games. And we might be tantalizingly close to our first ever Premier League title. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's win the match initially. The fact that I'm having to play much and madness in this game. Not ideal. They're both very young, very inexperienced. I know we're a very young side. That's not usually a, a problem for us, but much and madness have started maybe three games for us between them, and we're playing them in such a huge game. Even someone like Vinicius Antonio is still in his first season playing for us regularly. He's still only 19. He's still probably only played about 20 games. So we've got three very inexperienced boys in, for not just for this match, for this very important sequence of matches we've got. We've got Manchester City, then Manchester United, then the second leg against Paris Saint-Germain, and we're having to play three very inexperienced players to get through it, and we've just gone a goal down. I've talked so far about the positives if we win these next, next three games. If we don't, <laughs> the season is all but over. It's not over. We'll probably still be top of the Premier League. We'd be out of the Champions League at that point in the first knockout round, which would be disastrous. Uh, but yeah, defeats in these games doesn't bear thinking about. To to have played as well as we have this year, only to be undone by some frustrating injuries at a key moment of the season, that would, that would trouble me a little bit. And uh, what would trouble me more is the fact that everyone would blame me for not rotating. We're going attacking. And I, I wouldn't even argue with you for it. It probably would be my fault. I still don't rotate enough. Madness! Oh, that would have been incredible if he grabbed... What a way to grab your first goal for the club that would have been, but he's uh, he's fired it wide when... I mean, really, he should be at least testing the goalkeeper there. We are going to demand more. It seems a little bit a little bit odd still to be demanding more against Manchester City, but look at those match stats. We are the better team. We're seeing this in the majority of the games we play now. We're the better side even when we're not winning. And maybe my assistant manager was right about Ian and Veloso after all. They're the two worst players on the pitch rating-wise today. Um, but rather than swapping them over and seeing how that works, I'm just going to haul them both off. Uh, Francisco can go out on the right. Ivanovic can go up front. They've, uh, I mean, it's, it feels like football manager is just trying to prove it was right and I was wrong by giving them both bad performances because I've swapped them from where the game wants me to play them, even though where the game wants me to play them is utterly illogical. Why would you put Ian up front ahead of Veloso in any circumstances? Ian's a winger. Right. Final change. It's going to have to be McKenna coming off, I think. Um, Diaz can come on for him. I don't think 
we're going to win the first of the the important three, are we? Unless we've got a late goal in us. And Much has won the ball back in midfield there, plays it back to Antonio. Are we going to have the three youngsters combined? Much playing it forward. If he plays that out to Madness, having received the ball from Antonio, and the three of them had grabbed the goal, it would have been fairy tale stuff. Diaz playing it over to Juan Jose, who's got himself into a good position here, plays it into Jovanovic, and squares it for Francisco, and James Francisco has grabbed the equaliser. What an important goal. I said a few episodes ago, that although he doesn't play much for us anymore, he's still so dangerous when he does, and he's shown it there. A madness, so unselfish, because he could just drive that towards goal from there and probably grab himself a goal, but instead spots Francisco, in space, slides it across for him. Now let's go and grab a winner, boys. Come on, we've got a Premier League to win here and 10 minutes to do it in. City are on the back foot. They've they've been afraid of us all day long. We're so much better than they are. They're a team in decline, but we were only able to grab a draw. I said a win's not essential. The important thing was to not lose. That's what's happened there. Um, we're still eight points clear of Manchester City with 10 games to go. That'll do. They shouldn't be catching us. Um, United, if they win their game in hand, which is probably this afternoon or tomorrow or Monday or at some, there you go, Wednesday. So even if they win that, they're still two points behind us. And then their next game is playing against us. So we could push that back out to a five point gap with seven games to go by beating them at the start of the next episode. And then hopefully going on to beat Paris Saint-Germain. All pressure all the time when you're, when you're playing with the big boys, isn't it? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.